Patriots God. Matthew sees him as the Messiah. Uh, Mark sees him as a suffering servant. Luke sees him as man. And of course, John sees him overall as God or the Son of God. And we said that he is the great I am of the, uh, of the New Testament. He is the same one that spoke to Moses in the, in, in the book of Exodus chapter 3. I am the bread of life. He becomes bread to us. I am the light of the world. When we're in darkness, we need light. I am the gate when you need to have a door to go through. Uh, he is the door. I am the good shepherd. You need someone to take care of you. He will be there. I am the resurrection of life. He can bring newness to your, your life, not only in terms of your physical life and your emotional life and your psychological life, but also your biological life when you die and pass on to eternity. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and I am the true vine. He's the connection. So Jesus is all of that to you and to me. He is the Son of God. He is God in the flesh. John tells us that in chapter, in verse 5, chapter 1, the light shines in darkness, and darkness did not comprehend him. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. And we know John from the book of Luke uh, is the son of Elizabeth and Zacharias. He is also the cousin, we believe, of Jesus Christ. And Mary uh, and Elizabeth met at one time, and, and as Elizabeth was about six months pregnant, and, and, and Mary maybe three months pregnant, or somewhere in that neighborhood, the Bible says that when Mary and, and, and Elizabeth came together, two cousins, that John, uh, who was in Elizabeth's womb, leaped for joy because uh, he knew that he was in the presence of the Savior and in the terms of Mary carrying Jesus' child. I mean, uh, Mary carrying the child, uh, uh, carrying Jesus in her body. And so Jesus is the light of the world. And John so was the one who was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. G John then was a forerunner who came to tell us about Jesus Christ. And that tells us that you and I should be telling people about Jesus Christ. We are we should be the ones who are going to the hedges and highways and broadcasting that he is the light. Because the world is in darkness. We think about all the things that are going on with wars and rumors of wars. America has been in the, is in a conflict now with Iraq and Afghanistan. And then, then of course, we've got all the drug situations south of the border. And we've got all the tension uh, in other parts of the world, especially China and North Korea. Uh, and so, and then in our own neighborhoods, in our own schools, with the dropout rate, the teenage pregnancy, the world seems to be in darkness, but Jesus is the light, and we should be about telling folk about that light. And the church should be a light for others, as the menorah in the Old Testament. We should be the light for those who are suffering. We should not just shine our light within the four wall sanctuary, but we should be shining our light in the four corners of the world. And the Bible tells us a book about John, chapter 1, verse 1. He was in the world, and, and the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. Now that's sadness is when you are here, you are the creator, and you are not recognized. He came into his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. Of course, he came to the Jewish nation as the Messiah, and they rejected him. And so then the Bible tells us in, in John chapter 1, verse 12, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. God now adopts you and me to his body. We are the adopted sons of God, as many as receive him. So all one has to do is believe on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You have been taken out of darkness, put into the light. You have become, I have become a child of God, even to those who believe on his name, who were not born of the blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. We, our salvation doesn't come from what we do or what we say or what we believe in, so to speak, but it comes from the will of God. And that's what God wants us to be, in his will. Listen to verse 14. It sort of echoes verse 1. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, we said previously that the word was God. So God becomes flesh and he dwelt among us. And we, meaning that John said, I, we saw his glory. Glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ, the only begotten. Only begotten means one of a kind. He's one of a kind because he's not only God, he's not only an angel, he's not only a messenger, he's not only man, but he encompasses all of the deity of the Godhead. He is 
He is all God and all man. He is one of a kind, and that is Jesus Christ. And John says, John testified about him and cried out saying, This was he of whom I said, who comes after me has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. Now John is testifying, and John is going to say later, I must decrease while he must increase. What, what a lesson for us as pastors. How many times when we get in the pulpit, pastors, and, and the uh, congregation saying amen and hallelujah, and, and we get all, you know, into it, and, and we sort of take the spotlight off Jesus and put the spotlight on us. It's all about us. It should never be about us. It's about Jesus Christ. And John was a, is the first to say, he is a higher rank than me. I must increase, I must decrease while he must increase. Talking about Jesus Christ says this in verse 16. For of his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Isn't that wonderful? Grace upon grace. By grace you are saved through faith, not a work. Least any man should boast. Grace is that unmerited favor from God. Grace is what God gives you when you don't deserve it. Grace is, is, better, is better than anything that you can think of because when sin abounds, grace abounds even more. Grace gives us what we don't deserve. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Under the law, we all die. But under grace, we all live. Thank God for his amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Amazing grace. No one has seen, verse 18 of John, of John chapter 1, no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father. He has explained him. I love the way that, that the New American, New American Standard writes this verse, verse 18, and also uh, the International Version. Listen to it very carefully. No one has seen God at any time. Now, of course, Moses saw the back of God, but in terms of seeing him is his completeness. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten God, the only begotten God, John calls him the only begotten God, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has explained him. Because Jesus said to Philip later on, If you've seen me, you have seen the Father. I and the Father are one. Those of you who are struggling with the deity of Christ and wanting to know more about how God is, is the Father, if you have received Jesus Christ, you have received the Father. John goes on to tell us in John chapter 1, verse 19, This is a testimony of John, when the Jews sent uh, to him priests and Levites and to Jerusalem asked him, who are you? Now, you have to understand the scenario here. John is out preaching. John is about 31 years of age, I would think, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, Jesus is about 30 years of age. And John has been preaching in the wilderness for a number of years. Repent, repent, repent. He hasn't gone to any of these seminaries. And so he's out in the woods preaching. And the thing about it is that many people are following him rather than following the priests and the Levites. Uh, and, and, and there was a, a, a sense of jealousy because now uh, they may lose some of their money. And so they want to know, who are you? And they weren't asking John uh, out of desire to know. They were trying to shut his mouth so he wouldn't take their conjugation. And he confessed and, and did not, and, and did not, uh, he did not deny and confess, I am not the Christ. I am not the Messiah. Now, of course, we, to, we know from the book of Samuel that uh, we are told that the Messiah would come and that he would be the son of David. He would sit on the throne. And John said, I am not the Messiah. I am not the Messiah. Then they said, well, who are you? Are you Elijah? Because Elijah will precede the second coming of Jesus. Are you the prophet that, uh, uh, that Moses talked about? Who are you? And that's where we have to leave it off today. When we come back, we're going to tell, talk to you about who Jesus really is. Because it said in verse 22, And they said to him, Who are you? So that we may give an answer to those who sent us what to say about you. And then John says, I am a voice of the one crying in the wilderness. And that's what you and I should be doing, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We should be the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. This country, this county, this city, our community needs your voice. We need your voice so that we can be into 
be the light that God has called us to be.